Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about flushing your cooling system on your vehicle. And as you can see here, I'm going to be using the Peak Flush and Fill Kit. You can pick these up anywhere, anywhere from any auto parts store to Walmart. They are less than 10 bucks. And uh, there are several different varieties out there. Uh, Peak makes one, Preston makes one. You can even find some generic kits out there. They are literally all about the same. In my opinion, this is absolutely the best way to flush your cooling system at home. There are better ways to flush a system by taking it to the dealership, and I'll explain that uh, briefly, but this is, in my opinion, the best way to flush it at home. Um, the problem with flushing your cooling system, a lot of people simply drain the radiator and refill it. That accomplishes very little. Your radiator only contains, they, they estimate about 40% of the coolant in your vehicle. So if you drain your radiator and refill it, you've only really flushed 40% of the coolant out there. And not only that, I wouldn't even call that a flush. All you did was drain it. You've, um, you haven't ran any fluid through it in such a way as to actually flush and remove debris. All you've really done is drain some, maybe some of the debris out of the radiator, if anything. So this is the best way to do it at home. If you take it to a dealership, the advantages they have, or they have techniques that'll let them flush your cooling system with their thermostat open. And that's the whole problem is that with your vehicle's thermostat closed, you're not gonna be able to flush the entire cooling system. However, this technique will flush as much of the cooling system as is possible with your thermostat closed. Now, there are two techniques that some people at home like to do to get the thermostat open when they flush it. Some of them will remove the thermostat, and that works okay on some vehicles. On other vehicles, that's actually problematic because the thermostat actually seals the thermostat housing and you'll get tons of leakage, which may not be the end of the world. Um, there's also the ability to bring your engine up to operating temperature so the thermostat's open before you begin the flush. Now, in my opinion, that's asking for trouble and it's dangerous because you're gonna be introducing cold or at least a ground temperature tap water into your cooling system, which is gonna be at operating temperature, which is gonna be close to 200 degrees. And you should never put water that cold into your cooling system. Um, or let it run through your engine when it's hot. You could really damage your engine. So I'm not even going to discuss those. I don't think those are good ideas at home. This is going to give us a really good flush. Maybe not the best one in the world, but it's going to give us a pretty dang good flush. So as you can see here from the kit, what you've got, you've got some hose clamps. You've got some T's to fit most, uh, most sizes of the heater hoses. We've also got a deflector. A deflector tube is what they call it. Um, and we have a backflow preventer. So you can see all of that in here, and next I'm gonna tear it apart, get the parts out I need, and we'll pick up from there. Okay, so you can see I've gotten all the parts out that I'm gonna need for my vehicle. The main thing you're gonna to have to figure out is what size T you need for your vehicle. And if you don't know the size of your heater hose, once you get the hose cut, you can just kind of take this T and, um, and kind of figure out which one works the best. The other things you see here, we've got both hose clamps out that we're going to need. We've also got the backwash preventer and the deflector tube. Now, just a note, this deflector tube will not fit on my vehicle. As I've seen several vehicles I've tried to use these kits on where it won't fit, that's fine. You don't need it. All it does is snap into your radiator opening, and it prevents the water coming out from running over into the fan and kind of spraying on you. So it doesn't, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to make it more convenient for you. So... These are all the parts I'm going to need. The only thing that's going to be, you're going to need to decide on is what size T to use, and you'll be able to figure that out here shortly. Um, so that's about it for us to get started. Uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, guys, now you can see my actual engine. We're doing this on a 2005 Dodge Dakota. Literally every vehicle is different. It's pretty easy to do on my Dodge. Depending on what vehicle you have, this can actually be a fairly difficult procedure, either in finding the heater inlet hose or in once you're finding it, um, being able to cut it and put this T in. So first thing we have to do is we have to find the heater inlet hose. You have two hoses that run from your engine to the firewall. One of those is the heater inlet hose. As you can see, this is mine. These are the two hoses here. Um, they come out over here on the left and they run down to the water pump, at least on my vehicle. One runs to the water pump and one runs to the actual block for the cooling system. So you have to trace those back and you're looking for the one that runs to the block, not to the thermostat. Um, as you can see, I had to come over here and trace these down. It's pretty easy. Um, 
I traced out to find my heater inlet hose, and that may be the most difficult part of this procedure, is finding the actual hose. Um, once you find it, that's easy. I simply traced it through the engine back on the top and came out over here um, to find the, the correct hose to use. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of plastic, this little um, protective plastic off, and then you're going to cut the hose in half as clean as you possibly can. It needs to be in a straight section of the pipe if possible, and again, your cut needs to be as flush and clean as it can be. So let's give that a shot and we'll come back. Okay, guys. Now, as you can see, I've got the hose cut um, into two pieces. I've already test fit everything um, just before uh, showing you this. So I've got both ends of it. Now we're going to install the T. Um, first step is to put the hose clamps on either end on both sides of the, the cut pieces of your heater inlet hose. So um, get your hose clamps on there. Um, sometimes it's also helpful before you put the hose clamps on, make sure that you're putting it on in such a way that it's going to be as easy as possible to get to the, the screw head. So let's get the T, let's get the T put in here. Um, not much to that. If you, at least if you select the correct size, it should go in pretty nice. Now I'm going to tighten these hose clamps down. Now one thing you need to know, when you're tightening these hose clamps, they need to be pretty secure, but be careful when it comes to tightening these. You know, you're tightening these down onto a plastic T. You could easily crush that T if you get a little overzealous in your tightening. So tighten it down until it's secure, and then and later, uh, when you're finished with the procedure, you know, run the engine operating temperature and make sure it's not leaking, and as long as it's not leaking, you're fine. So get the T installed. That didn't take but a minute or so. Now the next step, um, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, zoom out here so you can see more of the engine. We're going to take the radiator cap off and this is where you would install the deflector tube if it fits um, and you'll understand why in just a minute but take the radiator cap off to vent the cooling system although it should be vented already from you cutting that hose and now our, our next step is going to be we're going to install the backflow preventer that comes with the kit uh, with the peak it's the blue and black connector um, it's designed to only go on one way. It's actually got an arrow on it, so you know which way that is. But the easy way is that the blue connects to the water hose and the black connects to the black T. Uh, but there is an arrow on it in case you get confused. Um, all this is doing is it's preventing the pressure from your cooling system from backflowing um, potentially into your water hose. Obviously, you've got um, coolant in here, which is poisonous. You certainly don't want that to accidentally backflow into your into your water system although it's highly unlikely it's still possible so let's get the water hose connected should be pretty self-explanatory not much to do here um, also it goes without saying you should be doing this entire procedure with the engine cool um, you do not as I said initially you do not want to introduce cold water into a hot engine um, that's asking for catastrophe so got the water hose connected let me uh, zoom out here so you can see the entire engine. And now our next step is going to be to turn the water hose on. So uh, let's get that going. And you'll start seeing the water flush out. There you go. And the instructions tell you to run the engine at idle while you're doing this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the engine. And as well, you want to run this for about five minutes or until the water coming out is, is crystal clear. So I would five minutes is going to be um, a good amount. There's, there's almost no way you would still have dirty water coming out. If so, your cooling system's pretty nasty if it takes five minutes. So I'm not going to make you watch water bubble out for five minutes. Uh, I think you probably got better things to do. So I'm going to run this for five minutes, and then I will be back on to uh, show you the rest of the procedure. Okay, now that we've finished the uh, flushing process, obviously the next logical step is let's go ahead and get the water hose disconnected. Um, you're going to want to disconnect the water hose and the backflow preventer valve as well and save that in case you need to do this again in the future. And here's a really important tip. Make sure you put the cap back on the T you installed. Uh, you will find out uh, once you fill the system and um, crank it up. You'll find out later if you forgot to do that. Unfortunately, you probably won't find out until you're driving down the road and your engine starts overheating. So it's easy to overlook that. So make sure you get the cap installed securely on there. 
And again, once you're finished with this procedure, I recommend that you drive the vehicle maybe around your block um, to help it warm up and bring it in and then just take a look at everything you've done to make sure you don't have any leaks. Uh, you don't have any leak at the T where you installed it or any of that. Um, you certainly don't want something you've done for preventative maintenance to actually cause your engine to overheat later. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need to drain the radiator. Uh, we've just finished flushing it, but we've still got a lot of coolant in the radiator. So we're going to get underneath the very front of the vehicle. It's where it's, lo it's located at the bottom of the radiator on almost all vehicles. Uh, you've probably even seen this if you've watched any of my other videos on the replacing your thermostat. So what we're looking for is a little drain cock valve uh, at the bottom of the um, radiator. We're just going to open that and remove it, and that will complete the draining process. So let's just let that drain. And this is an important part of the flushing process. It's also important because we just flushed our cooling system with tap water. Um, and tap water is not ideal to be in your cooling system, um, depending on where you live. Uh, it may, it's worse in certain areas. But tap water can cause your, your cooling system to corrode. So you don't want tap water in your system. Uh, when you add antifreeze to it, it's got some anti-corrosive properties. But uh, let's give this a good drain. And then once that finishes, we'll come back and show you how to finish up. All right, let's get to the final step. Now that we've uh, flushed the cooling system, we've drained the radiator, I've already went back underneath and replaced that drain cock. Uh, that's extremely important, although you'll figure out very quickly if you forgot as you begin filling, and you also notice that it's running out the bottom as fast as you're pouring it in the top. So make sure you replace the drain cock. Now, I'm a big proponent of this. Some people argue it doesn't matter. However, science says otherwise, and, and I tend to side with science. I, I want to make sure that we keep the, we get the tap water as much as possible out of the cooling system. So I'm going to be replacing it with distilled water. I picked up several gallons of distilled water um, from Walmart. Uh, it's like 80 cents a gallon, uh, probably about the cheapest thing you can buy by the gallon. So I'm going to fill the radiator with distilled water. And I'm not going to show this because it's just repetitious. But I'm going to fill the cooling system with distilled water. Then I'm going to run the engine up to operating temperature, um, basically letting the distilled water mix with the tap water that's left in the cooling system. Um, as I mentioned before, the radiator is only about 40% of your cooling system. So I bring it up, let all of it mix together, and then I'm simply going to go underneath the radiator again, remove that drain cock, um, let all that water drain out. Then I'm going to refill it again with distilled water and repeat that process. I generally do that two times. That may be overkill, but I like to fill the cooling system with distilled water a total of three times and drain the radiator a total of three times just to dilute and get as much tap water out of there as possible. Now, the reasoning behind this is tap water, depending on where you live, it varies, but tap water can cause a lot of corrosion in your cooling system long term. Um, so I want to minimize those chances. Now, eventually, once I've flushed the cooling system and drained it that last time with the distilled water, I'm obviously going to refill it with coolant. And, and the benefit of having the coolant in there, which in my case I use a 50-50 ratio, uh, depending on where you live um, in your vehicle, some of them recommend different amounts. Um, where I live down here, a 50-50 ratio is, um, is pretty much standard. Um, so you can either consult your owner's guide or look at the uh, the actual bottle of coolant and it'll give you some ideas as to um, what mixture you should uh, use. So I'm going to refill it with some coolant and coolant has chemicals in it that are anti-corrosive. So it has chemicals in it that'll help neutralize anything in the, the water that's remaining so that it's not corrosive. It also has uh, lubricants in it to help, lube, to help lubricate your water pump. And I'm not going to get into the controversy of running pure water in your engine versus not. Uh, pure water is a better coolant. It cools your engine better than antifreeze. Um, however, depending on where you live, the, the disadvantage of running pure water is um, if you live in an environment where it frequently gets below freezing, that's a bad idea. So I'm just going to recommend that you put cool in it. Um, if you want to be uh, one of those people who doesn't, then that's up to you. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to, obviously I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to flush and fill this. I'm not going to flush. I'm going to drain this and refill it with distilled water two more times after bringing it up to operating temperature and letting it mix. And then we're going to call it a day. I uh, hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or needing help.